Hello everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. Today's question comes from Spider-Man Sidekick 1, who uh, says this. Hey Cap, I heard a lot of fangirls want a Loki solo film. Really? Fangirls? Fangirls? I haven't heard this, so there's just like a lot of a lot of girls that... Well, I guess there are a lot of women that find him extremely attractive, so you I know, can totally see that. I did hear a couple girls talking about that the other day. So really? I would love to see a Loki movie, and they said it just like that, and I was like, what's your deal? <laughs> But then the other girl said, what's your problem? So, yep. Uh, and, and he says, uh, I heard a lot of fangirls want a Loki solo film, and I was wondering, could that idea work? He goes on to say, supervillains have carried their own stories before, but would the general public accept a big-time supervillain as the main character of a film? After all, I think the general public would love a Joker solo film. So uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, he mentioned Loki, he mentioned Joker, about two or three other big things popped in my head. Um, just overall, uh, just, just starting out, I think even, even without examples, um, do you think this is a trend that even ought to get started, or would it depend on how it got started? I feel like if it got started and it was successful, it wouldn't, wouldn't stop, because I think people will jump on this. I do. Uh, Is it because of the anti-hero thing? Or? Exactly. Okay. Be because people like the dark thing, and they, they like to go towards the realistic thing, and if you make a super villain movie, it doesn't have to be for kids. It's about somebody who does bad things. So uh, I think if people jumped on it, it would happen, and it would. I mean, I think if they, if they, I think if they started on it, people would jump on it. So, yeah. What do you think, Cap? I think it depends on the character that you do it with. Um, well, and I'm going to say this from two different perspectives because I immediately thought, well, I don't. I immediately thought there are characters I might want to see that with, and then I also immediately thought there I, there are certain characters that I don't think it would be financially viable to do it with, and therefore we wouldn't really start a trend. Like, um, like uh, there was a lot of talk about doing a Venom solo film. I don't think that would work. I, yeah. like, well, like, if it was Eddie not Brock. Not if you do that guy. Not if it was Eddie Brock. Now, since I mean, and I'm talking about back after Spider-Man 3 that was talking about Eddie Brock Venom getting a movie. Right. Uh, lately, we've heard more and more talk about, well, if The Amazing Spider-Man series continues to be successful, maybe they would eventually go for Flash Thompson. And I say, heck yes, do that. You know, that that could be fantastic, because he's actually a superhero. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean? So, I mean, th th that could work. And, you know, a superhero having to deal with um, this uh, entity that is not, in and of itself, altruistic or a superhero heroic kind of thing. That's that's interesting. That could work because we still have a, have a hero, you know, at least at least trying to keep this thing in check, right? Um, but as far as just uh, is just what I'd like to see, um, I would be the the first thing is I think that. Um, it could be great just because if we got some really good ones, I wouldn't feel so bad about the fact that kids couldn't see them, which has been a thing for me lately. Is there there been you know it, the fact that we had a Superman film and it was and, and it was kind of like up in the air as to whether or not it was it was appropriate enough for kids. I was like, yeah, it's Superman. You know, I love I love Superman. I love kids to be able to see Superman. But if you made a if you made you know if they had done X Men Origins Magneto, that doesn't need to be a, a movie a movie for kids. You know, right? Uh, that that sort of thing. Um, and then I think about the characters that they would be most likely to do because of how popular they are, and a lot of them I don't feel like I want to see in their own standalone movies. I don't think a Joker solo film is a good idea. You know, I think it would be interesting. Uh, I, mean, I think it depends on how you spin it, really. Okay. I mean, first of all, they do make movies about serial killers. I guess I say that based on how I think they probably so somebody would be most likely to make that movie. But obviously, I'm projecting on what I think Hollywood is most likely to do with it. Um, you're right. If it was like a serial killer kind of kind of thing, where where we just look at, uh, it, we do it as a character study, that could be really cool. But I would be worried that they would just straight up go origin. You know, what I would do if I were making a Joker movie, I would make it uh, the main character, the, well, the person who we see the story through would be a henchman. And uh, it would be kind of like surviving the Joker. And, uh, I mean, I guess maybe that's kind of taking the question and moving it to the side and saying, well, sure, this might be yeah. a better path. But I also think that uh, if your villain could potentially have a character arc, it's worth making a movie where they're the main character. Thereby, do I think they could make a Loki movie? Sure, because he's a yeah. rational-thinking human, be human being. Well, God-ish thing, but whatever. Alien, whatever you choose. But, but he's, uh, he's complex. He's not yeah. strictly evil. His motives are not, I'm going to destroy Thor because... That's that's what the writer told me to do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then you have the Joker who just likes chaos, and he's not going to have a character arc, 
Otherwise, you're kind of changing the core of the character as people tend to accept him. And that's why I would be afraid that that uh, if somebody tried to make a Joker film, they'd be most likely, again, because a lot of time when we do these sorts of properties, we try to make them as accessible as possible to a general audience. I feel like the, I feel like the rated R, uh, uh, you know, portrait of a serial killer Joker movie is not what would get made. Um, yeah. I'd love to see that. That's the version I would enjoy. Um, probably be most likely to enjoy, right? I think, but. Would bring into question whether or not it's still Joker at that point, but... Okay. What would what would worry me about it... Or what, I mean, what I would think that they would be most likely to do would be, like I said earlier, like a... like a... like a... almost a Joker biopic? Yeah. And, you know, I wouldn't mind a biopic with certain villains. Like... No, but part, part of the thing that a lot of us really like about the Joker, or about a lot of versions of him, is that we don't know where he came from. So I don't want to see the... the, you know, here's here's the Joker from... You know, childhood <laughs> up to now. I don't think I'd want to see that. Yeah, y you know. But again, that's. But as I've always said, that's not saying that I couldn't be made to really love it. But with that character, especially, he's the work really hard. I'm going to gonna disagree with something you said earlier. Okay, go, on, go right ahead. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing an Eddie Brock Venom movie. I wouldn't mind it. I think they could spin it in their own way. In fact, I don't think that they have to do the same thing that came out of the comic books. I feel like you could no, make... No, you wouldn't have to. The only reason I say I don't think I'd want to see it is because I've never seen it done done very well. Yeah, I mean, so much of it is spun out of Spider-Man, and it has to be largely. So when, when I see that, I mean, it's if they could spin it out of the property and then have Eddie Brock doing the thing that he did in the comics, which was kind of battling against himself as to whether or not he's going to be this mass murderer, or uh, if, or like, can you be a mass murderer and still be a hero? Because, well, he's killing everything in sight. Yeah, but then how's it that much different from The Punisher? Well, yeah. Like, I, I guess what I mean is... It can work, though. This is, you're right. You're, no, you're right. It could. It's just I haven't seen that character done by himself in a very interesting way ever. So the so the, the odds that a Hollywood movie would be the first thing to finally do it right seems really slim to me. Yeah, but I that's mean, not to say happen. that it couldn't happen. I, I yeah I get that, but it would be really risky to start there. And even if it was a great movie, what are the odds that enough people would go see that? I don't think the Venom solo movie is the place to start this trend if it were to be a trendsetter sort of thing. You yeah. see what I'm saying? That's going to be a low key thing that's not going to get that many butts in the seats. Venom's not going to be the next Iron Man as far as as far as the the trendsetter that gets a lot of these things started. Now, that's not to say that if you make a solo, I just feel like this is kind of a, maybe a little bit a part of what he was thinking about when Spider-Man sidekick when he wrote this question. Um you know, do you think doing these is a good idea? Um, like I said, I had two minds about it. Uh, is it good to do them at all? And B, what would you have to do to make it a thing that could be viable for multiple properties? And I and and so I mean, like you know, you could start with you could do one, and it could be really really great. But the question is, do you want to see any more of them? You know, um, and what would be the one that would maybe get this kickstarted in a, in a good way? Or does it matter if we kickstart? This is a is a, I guess I'm just seeing like 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 villain standalone movies as being another potential subgenre of the superhero thing it, itself, and seems potentially very financially. Uh, uh, viable and possibly successful for um, these companies, given that uh, we have we have gone in such an anti-hero direction with, a, with with you know, I mean like like people just like anti-heroes. Yeah, is a thing, and we've also we've also made a lot of our superheroes a lot more conflicted type characters. So yeah, I could see it. Um, I, I'm trying to think of who of, of maybe other characters too, but you look like you have a thought. Go ahead. I, I mean I think the the big question that I wanted that, that we got to before we got to the to the final idea that we needed to approach was sure. uh, is it artistically or financially possible uh, I do think it's artistically possible we've discussed it being financially potentially lucrative and uh, I think trying to make it across the board I think it's almost like any superhero movie at all. Well, can you do one about a character? Well, it depends on the character. Uh, not every superhero is going to look great on screen. And that doesn't necessarily mean visually. I mean, not every character is going to lend itself to the visual medium. 
Sure. Because not everybody needs to know about years and years worth of, uh, what do you call that, continuity. Continuity. And not every character is going to captivate a wide audience. Right. Uh, that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be made. It just means that you've got to be smart about your budget and your casting and all of that if you're going to make a more low-key thing that not everybody's going to watch. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Scott Pilgrim was obviously not going to be a giant, huge cash cow, and then made it in such a way where it could make its money back and attract the audience that it was going to attract and still be worth making. I'd like to see more things like that happen, you know, with, with different characters. You always talk about wanting to see a question movie. I feel like a question movie could be made, but you have to not pretend like it's going to do Iron Man numbers because it's right. just not, you know. Although before Iron Man came out, we wouldn't have said Iron Man numbers. No, I know that. No, no, absolutely, we wouldn't have. But I'm just talking about in the world we live in now. Right. That's the because it, it did it got so close to Avengers numbers that that's why I keep bringing that up because we're talking solo characters now. But and there's also the possibility for for Loki here since this is a specific question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for Loki, you could do something prior to Thor or the Avengers. So and I'm so not, tired of prequels. So I'm not saying that's a great thing. I'm just saying, you know, I've never been fond of the in their youth, but you can make a good one. I've seen good ones before. Yeah, yeah, you could. And you could make one where he's way off on his own, not dealing. Granted, I wouldn't want to see a solo Loki movie in the middle of his involvement with Avengers. I wouldn't care. No. I kind of want to see what the Avengers have to deal with with him. But uh, I do think you can make a solo Loki movie. And I also want to present this idea because I love this idea. Uh, Zaz movie. Wow. Why not? Wow, but see, but see, I would rather see kind of a kind of a small, intimate, almost like like low budget horror Batman movie with Zaz before you just gave him his own movie, right? Like, the, the, okay, that 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 brings me to a really um, to, to something I wanted to mention earlier. So I'm glad you brought that up because let me ask you this question: Aren't there a lot of villains that we love to hate that you have to have the hero in the contrast of it to continue having that experience with it? Like, I don't think I I don't think you can you can in the in the same way when that villain is your protagonist, meaning the the, the, the title character, the character that you're following. Um, I don't feel like you really have the same. I love to hate this person thing with a character that is your main character if there's not somebody to balance that. I think that, that it's more with a bad guy that you're also following as your protagonist. It's they do bad things, but I am to a degree sympathetic toward them. I can see why they do these things. I, I don't condone what they do, but I also understand them and I find them fascinating. And I feel like that's a little bit different than... You know, I mean, that's that's Walter White in Breaking Bad. I feel like I, I feel like if Breaking Bad worked, you could do a great villain movie. But I also feel like Walter White is not exactly that so so bad. I love I love hating him kind of character. He's not that. He's I I, I find I find it strange watching him that I care about him as much as I do, given the heinous crimes he's committed. That's the distinction, I think. And so you'd have to look at villains that you could have more of that relationship with. Yeah, I mean, I guess the bottom line is you're saying that the villain needs to have some kind of human element to them. And they so... need to have dimension. They, have, they need to have character dimension. Or it, well, I mean, needs to be, or it needs to be a deconstruction of psych... Of, 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 um, of psychopathy, mm -hmm. which was what the Joker kind of thing would have to be, because otherwise it would just be what you always like to call torture porn, and I don't want yeah. that. And uh, I mean, that stuff's awful, largely. Uh, in fact, you know, there's a lot of people that disagree with me that uh, I say the first saw is the good one, and then other people are like, well, the point of it is torture porn, so the later saws are the good ones, and I'm like, that's ridiculous. The first saw has a story arc and a character arc. Ridiculous. <laughs> so. I just said you ridiculous to no one. Well, uh, <laughs> if Vince doesn't have to do rants now, he's just done his. And uh, but uh, so if you look at uh, like let's say this Zaz movie that doesn't exist and probably will never exist. Uh, so if you do it in the in the tradition, of, I think it could work. Now it would make five and a half dollars, but I think it could work. <laughs> yeah. So if you did it in the tradition of say uh, a slasher pick, like you know Friday the Thirteenth or whatever, then. The person you're following around is not Zaz. You're you're following around the campers, whatever they would be, wherever they would be. Uh, so they become the heart of your movie, even though the person that you find interesting is the killer. Uh, but if you do it in the tradition, which is more what I would do, is uh, uh, more in the vein of. Uh, 
Henry portrait of a serial killer and make it a mm-hmm. character study. And uh, for Zaz, if I was going to make a Zaz movie, I would make it about uh, uh, the loss of remorse. I, I would make it over compulsion and interest, but have him have remorse at the beginning and then have a series of events that remove that remorse and instill in him pleasure in this event. you got to have that progression. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't think the first formula works at all for a pre-established comic book villain because if somebody else we've never heard of is our protagonist most people would immediately go why can't this be a Batman movie yeah I mean because but if you do it in the the uh, tradition of the slasher pick then you have uh, the final girl being the one who's it's more about escaping than it is I about get what it would feeding. be about but my point is you've got a pre-established character that existed in a superhero universe and people would go well why are we doing this old school horror format with this character when we could kind of just insert anybody else like like it doesn't need to be Zaz it could be anybody like you need to have a reason that it's that guy and I think a lot of people maybe this is too fanboy I should just feel like a lot of people um, would would feel like well, it needs to be a comic book universe, or what is the point of using Zaz? Well, I mean, maybe I'm overgeneralizing, and I'm not disagreeing with you, but no, no, uh, I, I, and I get what you're saying with that's how it would work, or that's how it could work, but I feel like a lot of people would find that incredibly lame, and like I said, it would make five and a half dollars. Like nobody would go to that. <laughs> I would, I would agree. The the first idea I don't like as much, but uh, so I mean. But on that logic, you could say that it somebody makes a Nightwing un- or Nightwing movie, and like, why not just make a Batman movie? Because it's set in Gotham. He's fighting the same villains. Because if you did a Nightman, uh, a, 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 a Nightman, Nightman, <laughs> Nightman. I'm Night- sure that guy exists. <laughs> Nightman too. I, I, but Nightwing would probably never get made without being a spinoff of a Batman movie. Right. Although I you could set up to be a spinoff ass- of a Batman movie. Yeah, but I'm just saying that. But to your earlier point, when you when you when you said when you said well well people would say why not just make a Batman movie? No, they wouldn't because Dick Grayson is popular in his own right. Dick Grayson had a huge following while Bruce Wayne wasn't around in the comics for two years in a bat suit. As um, the Dick Knight. So Dick so Dick Grayson is a viable character for his own movie in his own right in a way that Victor Zaz is not. That's all I'm saying. I don't feel like those two things are, are, are exactly comparable. Um, okay, I was just playing devil's advocate anyway. Oh, okay. Well, that's totally cool. But that doesn't make me less right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway! Makes, makes you left for me, because... That's true. That's true. I'm left. You're right. In the way this camera is set. <laughs> anyway, um, well, what, what, what else do we need to explore with this? Let, let, let's, just, let's just answer the first part of this uh, uh, straight outright. Do you want a Loki solo film? I'm going to say I could see it working really well, but I'm going to say no. I don't really care that much about that. Yeah, do I? If the idea is do I want one, mm-hmm. I have no desire. Yeah, I don't either. If one came out, I might be interested. You're already hearing a lot of people saying, "God, why does Loki have to be in every freaking Marvel film?" Like, like you know, you know, he was in Thor, he was in Avengers, then he's in the second Thor movie. What you got to, what, what you got to remember is Loki's always around in Thor. Yeah. Like, like if I, Thor's around, Loki's Thor's around. around, Loki's around. I mean, and, and I know that not everybody knows comic books, but you know, I've been reading more and more Thor lately, and Loki's gonna be in a Thor movie. Yeah. So, f- final thoughts, Vince. Final thoughts. Uh, I'll go watch a th- I'll go watch a Loki movie. Why not? It can work. But villain villain movies overall, like villain, just final think, final thoughts on that idea. It depends on how you approach which villain it is, yeah. and I tell you what, if you do a character study, uh, you can make it more interesting. And uh, I mean, essentially, I think it can work because we make movies about serial killers that are interesting, and maybe that's because a lot of them are true stories, maybe fictionalized versions of the true stories, but still true stories. So. Uh, all I'm saying is it can work. I'm not necessarily sure they will do it right, but it can work. I'm, my final thoughts are I think that there there could be some fantastic movies and stories here. Um, kind of kind of countering something you said earlier, um, I think that I would like to see villain standalone movies as a way to expound upon characters we've seen already. So I would want them to largely be spinoffs, probably. Um, like, like it would be kind of a weird way to introduce villains. Because, again, for a, lar- for a large audience that doesn't know them, they wouldn't even know who it was. Like, they wouldn't even necessarily know that came from Batman, that came from Super, depending on what it was and how small they were. But I think that, um, you know, I always wanted to see the Magneto movie. And we got First Class, and that took the place of that, and it was great. So that was, so, like, like I, I feel like we got something that replaced it in a great way. But that would have been the first of these. 
if yeah. that had ever happened, and that could have been really, really cool. And part of the reason that, I, that that a lot of people wanted to see that was because that would have been expounding upon this character that we found so fascinating already. So I'd like to see some of that done. I also, and I guess I go to this idea a lot, but it's because I'm waiting to see someone do it, and I really like this idea. I think more and more these days about vignette films, because they don't get made as much, and... And um and they're and they're interesting and I think a Batman villain vignette film could be really interesting. That would be neat. And you could have That'd Batman be. in it. You could have him in the background. You wouldn't even have to necessarily cast anybody. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Like you could just you could just have Batman story wise there and around in, in the background. But um you know you basically like the kind of. Not the story almost got him from Batman the Animated Series. Not that story, but like that where it's where we do a thing from the villains' perspectives, and we get in each of their heads, and you know we, we we cast five or six villains, and then we give them each a short story and a movie, and maybe find some kind of loose, interesting framework to connect them all. I'd love to see something like that done. I think I, I think there's there's some really imaginative ways you could go with a villain solo film. Yeah, I agree. Well, Vince, let's go ahead and go on a rant, and why don't you be in? I'll do that. Right after I pick up the post-it note. <laughs> the rant what, that I dropped you, you earlier. Know, you see, what would have been really slick is if you'd never called attention to it and you remembered your rant. <laughs> My rant. That would have been slick. Is people not knowing the difference between jazz and blues. It drives me nuts. And it, it, it drives me nuts. So people are like, well... Jazz and blues are the same thing, right? Like, no. Blues is more guttural. There's more... It's more rural. I mean, and even if it's... Uh, even if it's kind of this electrified urban blues, there's this... There's this... There's. I mean, there's this kind of cry that's in blues. The that, difference is one is really depressing and the other one is not. <laughs> I mean... I'm kidding. Jazz... I mean, blues, I tell you what, there's more sex in jazz than there is in blues. There's more folk in blues than there is in jazz. Sure. So, I mean, and you can have, I mean, both of them have their evolutions of what they are. And, of course, they oh, yeah. all evolve out of folk music anyway. But uh, blues is a little more closer to its roots in its current form than what jazz is. I was like, wait, so I established something, and now my point's gone. Oh, well. But uh, I mean, floor, you threw it over there. I, <laughs> I, and I know it's kind of maybe this is a little harsh to say, but a lot of it is that uh, essentially at some point white people say, you know what, <laughs> that's really pretty good. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get these guys that start going, well, let's play jazz. And then you get more white jazz music. And in fact, uh, uh, rock and roll was what rhythm and blues used to be before white people took it and started calling what they were making rock and roll, and they said, well, we're rock and roll. Uh, kind you of. You guys, that's what Chuck Berry says. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> and, I mean, he's one of the originators, so I assumed, I mean, he was around during that time. But, and, and rock and roll being an old blues term for, wow, that was weird, an old blues term for sex anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, all of this Which stuff makes it very redundant when you say sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> you say sex and drugs, and then say, and we're playing music. Ah, so I liked it. So, uh, so, and one of the reasons that people get confused is that if a song says blues, That's multitasking, it so basically you can do all of that at the same time. Sorry. It's sex and violence, frankly, which some people find a way, and they're criminals. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> that was that was that risque. Took a turn. <laughs> so, so I mean, and I think one of the big reasons people get confused is that uh, there's a lot of jazz songs that say blues. There's a lot of country songs that say blues. Okay, yeah, sure. There's a lot of blues songs that say blues. I mean, since these things all evolved out of the same stuff, all evolved out of the same root, essentially folk music, uh, the word blues just meaning, man, I'm depressed. And then you get different kinds of music that evolve out of folk. So it drives me nuts when people say, well, it says blues, everybody, it's blues. Well, no. Yeah, that's not really how it works. It's it's not how it works. I mean, so if you see something that says the word country... That's like saying if something scary happens in a drama, it's a horror film? Yeah. Or if something funny happens in a drama, it's a comedy. It's suddenly a comedy? I mean... Yeah. Just because something the has a name... Used. Now, I will say that it is odd that that word pops up as much as it does. You know, yeah. like, you know, we, 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 we could have maybe used some different word choice. But, I, <laughs> but yeah, I completely agree with you. Which, I will say, there, there are some things that kind of walk a line. Yeah. That's true. Oh, of course. But nobody's going to listen to uh, Satchmo. 
Louis Armstrong and say, that's blues. Now, may I ask you a question uh, just out of my ignorance because this is more of a... Um, as far as blues music goes, this is more. This is much, much more of your area. Area is everything the Blues Brothers ever did actually blues? No, in I fact, see, a I lot of it's really blues. I think most of it's not. Yeah. But I didn't know if I was right about that. They've done some blues, but mostly a lot of the stuff they do is rhythm and blues. But uh, I mean, essentially, it's R and B, classic R and B, which is just different from straight up blues. Yeah, I mean, classic R and B and uh, old rock and roll are pretty much the same thing. They're just there's there's kind of a yeah. different emphasis. There's not much of it. I mean, there's there's stuff like Wilson Pickett and Chuck Berry, and that's rock and roll, but it's more of an early form of rock and roll. Well, Wilson Pickett, Chuck Berry is definitely an earlier form of rock and roll. So, indeed. Well, uh, Vince, my rant shouldn't take very long. Uh, I, I, this is a very minor. This is a really small thing, super small thing. Doesn't matter, but I think it's kind of funny. Um, I, I think that uh, children's books that there's a lot of children's books that um, that, that that do uh, that 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 borrow uh, superhero stuff. I mean, there's lots of superhero kids books, and they they introduce you know kids to these characters, but they're they're just Vince. A lot of them not very true to the source material. And I just don't understand why they have to be so completely different. For instance, when was the Riddler ever this muscular? I mean, seriously, just look at that. Why? Really? The Riddler? This muscular? Well, you see, because they're using this to sell toys, and they want to use the same model. There is not a Riddler model. toy that looks like this. He's more muscular than Batman! <laughs> okay, and then and then they can't even be consistent from the cover to inside the book because then when you finally see the Riddler, he doesn't look like that. Look at him. He doesn't have giant muscles there. Is he even wearing the same costume? No, he's wearing an entirely different costume. So why do we have this giant muscular... I'm not convinced that's the Riddler. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty funny. So my rant is, that's weird. <laughs> my rant is, that's weird. Yeah. Oh, I've always been annoyed by those things. Inconsistency. Like, why can't you just represent it the way it is? I mean, come on. But I agree. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I'm okay with creative license when there's a cool idea behind it. And yeah. it serves the story somehow. But the I'm not of going to complain weird. about this doing things that doesn't serve the story. You want to read it, Vince? <laughs> no, I'm all right. No, okay. All right. I agree. I'm just saying that adding muscles to something is hilarious and strange. Like, why do you have to make something that looks like a toy? Why not just make something that looks like the character? But Vince, we could read about Aquaman doing ring toss. Because Aquaman's like, this is my only power. That's not fair at all. Yeah, a little <laughs> arbitrary too. Like, what, what about what about Aquaman makes him necessarily good at carnival games? <laughs> That's really funny to me. I can't think of anything. He spends his time playing the swordfish. Oh, yeah, that's hilarious. And they just jump up and grab the rings out of the air. <laughs> Whoosh. Well, everybody, thanks as always for watching. And uh, I'm sure folks have their own ideas about villains they'd love to see as uh, getting, I mean, getting their own solo films. So uh, leave your ideas for that in the comments. Let us know what you think about the idea of uh, Loki solo film, any other villains. Uh, leave, your, leave your comments and your ideas and, your, and, and uh, also questions for future videos if there's anything you'd like, us, you'd like to see us discuss on Geeks Not Nerds. In the meantime, we'll see you next week. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Vince.